Our next speaker for the day is Mr. Moinak Shen. He is Director Business Bryo and his topic for the day is Density-Based Clustering, DB Scan and Optics. Moinak Shen heads the analytics practice as Director at Business Bryo. He has varied experience both in industry and academia with companies like Thermax, Infosys, Ducker Research, US, Moinak is an active practitioner in data science with wide interests in mathematical models and their applications in addressing business-specific problems. He holds a bachelor's degree in engineering from Jadavpur University, Kolkata, and a full-time MBA from Michigan State University. With dual majors in marketing and supply chain management, and was also a graduate scholar at Purdue University, USA. Mr. Moinakshin, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, uh, particular family of uh, clustering algorithms. Uh, it's a little bit of a technical talk, uh, maybe compared to some of the others. Uh, I hope you don't find it too boring. Uh, and it's... Uh, little longish. Am, am I audible? I still need this. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this is uh, what we are going to do. Uh, we're, I'm going to have a brief introduction, uh, some examples. Uh, <laughs> key ideas, uh, and then a main algorithm called dbscan, uh, and uh, I'll take a few questions at the end, uh, if time permits. Uh, so as many of you probably know that uh, clustering is one of the main uh, areas of application in data science, and so it's basically given a set of data points, uh, how to partition it. Uh, so that the most similar points land up in the same clusters. Uh, many, many business applications of clustering, uh, starting from customer segmentation, probably the most uh, classical application is in marketing, uh, customer segmentation. And then uh, collaborative filtering, uh, recommender systems. I believe Nirupam was uh, talking about uh, recommender systems earlier today. Uh, so uh, clustering is actively used in some of the recommender systems. Uh, and of course, numerous technology applications, uh, uh, multimedia data analysis, including text, uh, how to cluster them, uh, dynamic trend detection, uh, sort of uh, also related to anomaly, uh, sorry, anomaly detection, and then uh, trajectory analysis. I have an example later on. Uh, so if you think about clustering, classically, there used to be uh, two approaches. Uh, one was the model-based approach, uh, like mixture models. Um, and then uh, there was the distance-based uh, approaches, uh, which again had uh, the flat models, uh, which are like the k classical k-means uh, kind of uh, clustering, and then hierarchical ones. What I'm going to focus on today is uh, something called uh, density-based clusters, uh, which we'll see. And uh, then there are other uh, kind of clustering algorithms like uh, NMF uh, and uh, spectral clustering. NMF is a non-negative uh, matrix uh, factorization. Uh, so why do we have uh, this density-based methods? Uh, the main reason is that uh, classical, uh, the classical methods have uh, serious drawbacks. Uh, number one, they require uh, domain knowledge a priori. So, for example, you, if you are doing k-means clustering, you, need, you need, uh, need to know the number of clusters in advance. Uh, so, it's ill-suited for uh, convex clusters. Uh, I'm sorry, ill-suited for non-convex clusters. Um, efficiency issues. So, if you have really big data and huge data sets, uh, they don't scale. And, uh, and the last point, uh, no ways of handling outliers, noise, or anomalies. And we'll see an example. Uh, so this arises from the fact that if you are doing a k-means kind of cluster, each and every point will has, uh, must be assigned to a cluster. 
So there is no concept of an uh, anomaly or an outlier or a noise. Uh, so I'll begin with few synthetic examples. So here are three uh, data sets. Uh, and uh, if you think about them, if you run classical clustering algorithms like say for example uh, k-means on this, uh, you will probably not get good results. So if you do k-means here, for example the first data set here, you see four clusters, right? Uh, the problem here is that the central cl cluster is disproportionately large compared to the other three. So if you do k-means with k equal to 4, it will give you four clusters, but the clusters will be wrong. Uh, similarly, the other one there, the problem there is that the clusters are non-convex. And again, there are four clusters there, but if you do k-means with four, you'll get four clusters, but again, they will probably be wrong. And finally, if you look at this bottom one, uh, four clusters there also, but you see the isolated points, uh, those are the uh, outliers or noise, and classical clustering would give you this. Whereas, if you use density-based methods, you get the right clustering. And this is kind of, a, as I said, this is a synthetic example, but I'm just trying to make a point. Um, now, coming to the, some real examples, where is it applied? So for example, this one, this is a crime data. You have crime data on a city and you want to identify crime hotspots. So the left hand panel, that one is the output from a k-means kind of a cluster. And you see it has identified zones and the red dots are the centroids. Whereas if you run a density based DB scan, you get the right hand panel, where you actually have the pockets identified. I'm sorry, the colors are a little fuzzy, but I, I hope you can make out the difference. So it's, it's, enti it's giving entire parts of the city, the K means it's giving entire parts of the city as hotspots, but uh, the DB scan is much more specific. Uh, here's another example. This is, uh, forest data from uh, California, uh, it's an open source database and this, uh, again the coloring is probably not proper but you can make out the different zones and these zones are mostly non-convex kind of grouping and this is only possible with DB scan kind of uh, density based methods. This is a satellite image of Mumbai and uh, so it was, this picture was fed into the input as an input to the clustering algorithm and that's what you get in the output. So pretty, pretty accurate. So it has got the clusters pretty correctly. A different example from medicine. So this is uh, skin lesions uh, from a dermoscopy examination for different kinds of skin, skin lesions. And you see the blue border, uh, the blue border is what the machine has identified through DB scan. And the red ones are what the expert or the dermatologist has identified. So you see pretty amazingly good match. The final example is what I was talking about. Uh, this is very, very new. I think it's uh, just, uh, this came out only this year, I believe. So this is uh, what is called trajectory analysis. So Thanks to modern day uh, GPS enabled cell phones, you can roam around with uh, your GPS on and it can identify where exactly you are spending your time when you are shopping versus when you are in the super, uh, office, when you are at home. And so this is actually taking real time data of your coordinates and trying to cluster your uh, locations. So I'll just uh, quickly go through the key ideas. So the key ideas are that you, the key idea is a neighborhood. So you have to define a neighborhood around a point. And then there is the concept of a density of a neighborhood. I'll just skip the math and uh, just illustrate it through a uh, picture. 
So you see this ball here and it's a ball of a certain radius and you define that radius a priori and that within that ra radius how many points lie that is basically the density of that neighborhood. So the green circle is your neighborhood and how many points are there within that circle is your density of that neighborhood. So if you shrink the ball, if you shrink the ball then obviously your density also goes down. Now the next idea is there are different kinds of points. So you have points which are directly reachable from points which are called core points and then you have points which are density reachable and again these are just terms I will illustrate and then there are density connected points. So for example the green circle there you see this blue dot in, mid, in the middle of that green circle. So if that is your central point all these three red points are directly reachable from that green point. But whereas if you look at the, at the red point here, this point here, that is not directly reachable, but you can hop to that point from a point which is directly reachable. So that is called a density reachable point. So that's just how it is defined. So this is density reachable and then there are the qu question, uh, concept of the core points and border points. So basically there are, I will just go through these slides. So there are three kinds of points, uh, core points, border points and outliers as I said noise. Uh, so if you look into this diagram, the red points are all core points because you can jump from one to the other directly. The yellow points are the border points and that blue point there is the outlier because you cannot jump to that point from any of these points. So this is a technical definition of two conditions of cl uh, clusters. So you have a maximality condition that any two points which are density reachable are part uh, of the cluster and uh, if a point is density reachable from any other point then it is part of the cluster also. So coming to db scan, uh, this is a pretty old algorithm but it's being in increasingly used nowadays, uh, it's about 20 years old uh, and the algorithm la goes like this that you pick an unassigned point at random and compute its neighborhood. If it's a core point then start your cluster from there else you make it as an outlier. In step 2 you try to expand your cluster and you expand it by adding all the points either the po all the points which are either directly reachable from the points or which are density reachable from the core. So if an outlier has been added, change its label to a border point and repeat the steps 1 and 2 till all the points are labeled. So it's just a simple iterative step and you go through this loop. Uh, that is pretty much it. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll take a couple. Yes. Using that uh, DB scan algorithm, huh. uh, sorry, unlike KMIN or KMIDN, it will not be the uh, ellipt elliptical shape. It no, it will not. Be that is th that is one of the main things I mentioned. That it uh, K-means is uh, restricted to convex sets, so it has to be convex. I mean, the, whatever you get out of K-means will always always be a convex set. But uh, and that is why it it cannot identify shapes like this. That is why it cannot identify uh, shapes like this ones. Which is an advantage of DB scan? Correct. Now, uh, when those maximality and connectivity are these the two main criteria by which it uh, completely identifies the cluster in DB scan? Or, I mean to say, when you, the condition, two conditions, what you have said, mm -hmm. maximality and uh, connectivity, is that yes. the, does that? 
sufficiently defined. Those are those are the properties of the points which define a cluster if you have applied the db scan algorithm. So if you have applied the db scan algorithm and it comes up with the clusters, then then these two conditions uh, then these two conditions will automatically be satisfied. That these are the properties of the db scan clusters. Yes, yes. So suppose in a real world data set there are say a number of attributes or features which are continuous and some of them are discrete. So is it applicable to this kind of a data set? That's a very good question. Uh, typically uh, DB scan uh, will not perform optimally if you have non-continuous data. Okay. So uh, see, see when you, whenever you are talking about Whenever you are talking about a neighborhood, neighborhood of a point, implicit in that uh, definition is a, is a definition of a distance. So you have to define a distance metric, right? So if you have a con continuous data, you can define something like an Euclidean metric or a Manhattan metric to define the distance. But if you have discontinuous data, I mean discrete data, then you have to come up with an appropriate definition of an underlying metric, of a distance metric. And uh, the performance of this algorithm will uh, critically depend on how you define that distance metric. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sen. Uh, I'd uh, request you to be around because we'll call you for your felicitation, but there are a couple of announcements before that. Uh, I'll go over with the happy announcement first. While Mr. Sen was speaking, I just got informed that Business Brio has been selected as a finalist for the Red Herring Asia 100 companies. Let us take the opportunity to congratulate Business Brio on this wonderful achievement. A generous round of applause, please. I request the president of uh, Data Science Foundation to come up here and acknowledge your applause, please, on this behalf. Uh, I'd like to call on uh, Mr. Moinakshen once more to come to the dais for your felicitation. And to do the honors, I'd request uh, Mr. Onindo Chatterjee, Executive Director of Finance, Webel. So please come here if you are. Okay. So can I um, request Mr. Nirupam Chaudhary to do the honors, please? Please. Big round of applause for him, please.